Welcome to Wasserland Retail Level 4. My name is Brian Majonga and I am a business studies lecturer at uh, Heads Bandit Yvette College, Spanese to Campus. Today we are going to be looking at Module 3, which is improving the net profit of a Wasserland retail outlet. Here's the lesson, the lesson overview. We're going to analyze uh, and improve gross profit in a wholesale and retail outlet. Uh, number two, we're going to analyze and reduce expenses in a wholesale and retail outlet. Number three, we're going to reduce, looking at reducing shrinkage in wholesale and retail outlet. F the first thing that we're going to look at is the uh, effects of inflation on gross profit. Um, inflation can be defined as the sustained increase in the price of goods and services over a given period of time. Uh, it can be uh, over a month, it can be, but it's usually calculated over, over a year. So over a period of 12 months. That's why we can have a, what they call year to year and it can be month to month uh, inflation calculation. Why is it important that uh, as retailers we need to uh, know uh, and, uh, and understand this uh, uh, concept of inflation rate? Uh, it is because when we are doing our business, uh, at times we may have um, uh, our, our sales figures going up. And uh, it, th that does not necessarily translate to, 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 to high profits uh, uh, margins because there are a number of factors that come in for us to be able to eventually calculate what is our, our, our net profit or our gross profit rather. So once your, your sales figures are going up, there are a number of things that uh, must be considered. Remember, your, your goods that you bought, uh, the price also might have gone up. So and you have increased the price of your, of your products but maybe you didn't factor in maybe the issue of transport, uh, the, that maybe fuel has also gone up uh, and so on. So you may find out that the transport cost that you are supposed to have factored in, maybe used the old figures that you, you had budgeted for, when in actual fact the, the, the cost has gone up. So your gross profit will not be as much as, a, 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 um, a, I mean, like in, in, in relation to to your sales. So you can actually be running a, profit, a loss if the costs are not probably checked. So you need to, to look at how much are you uh, uh, spending in terms of the cost of goods. Remember, it is the, the purchasing price plus all the transport costs that are involved there. So you need to consider that. Then now let's look at the effects of product range and product mix on gross profit. Every business, uh, uh, every business would want to make a profit. That's the reason why businesses are established. They're established for money. They're established so that a, a person can make a, a profit. So uh, the gross profit should be higher than the expenses because, uh, because you are going to use the gross profit to pay for the expenses that you, you, uh, you, you are going to incur. And these expenses, they include your, your salaries, they include your electricity, your water, uh, and many other things that you are going to pay for cleaning, uh, and so on and so forth. So all those things, they need to be paid from your gross profit. Hence, the gross profit must be big enough to pay those expenses, and then you also remaining with some, uh, some net profit. So how do you increase your gross profit? You increase your gross profit firstly by increasing sales. You need to sell more. The more you sell, the more money that you are having, and then it, will, it might also translate to a, a bigger gross profit. At times you may also need to increase prices of your goods that you are selling in your shop. You increase the price if it's necessary and if it is not going to affect your business negatively. Because if you just increase your prices, maybe you end up uh, selling your prices way above the competitors and your customers will go uh, and buy from the competitors and you'll be left with your uh, very expensive products. 
you may also need to reduce the cost of goods sold. How do you reduce the cost of goods sold? You need to, 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 to look at your, your, your purchasing uh, methods, the way you are purchasing. Um, it could be that maybe you are having many trips, you are going to replenish your stock several times, and it means you, know, you may not be able to, to get some trade discounts. But if you change and you, then you start uh, buying in, uh, in bigger quantities, even in bulk, then you'll be able to negotiate for some discounts there. And also, if you are going to collect the, the, uh, the stock on your own, the more trips that you make, the, the higher the transport cost would be. And remember, the transport cost, we said you add it onto the cost of goods, uh, on, onto the purchase price to come up with the, the cost of goods sold. So if you are going to uh, have many trips there, it is going to affect the cost of goods sold. It is going to go up. So you should try also to, to, uh, to buy in bulk and ensure that you, um, you reduce the cost of goods sold. That is the way of uh, ensuring that you have less, uh, I mean you have a high gross profit, is to reduce shrinkage. Shrinkage is all about loss of stock, stock that is unaccounted for. We must be able to account for all the stock that we are having in the shop, so we must uh, try and ensure that all points that we can lose our stock are closed or they are checked thoroughly so that um, that is uh, reduced. Then the other way of increasing our gross profit, it is through uh, how our, our um, product mix and our product range are structured. So here we, we say you must sell both low profit and high profit margin items. I've given examples here to say maybe your low profit items are bread, milk, meat, uh, and so on. And then you have got your, uh, like your f things like your flavored milk and your cakes. If maybe say you are running a spaza shop, those could be your high profit uh, margin items. And then uh, choose the product that make up the product mix carefully. This is very important, the product that you are going to sell. Some products that you can choose, that you can sell, might not sell. They might be those products that are difficult uh, to sell, that are not uh, so much on demand. So um, you need to look at that. So maybe let's look at these items uh, one by one. Let's look at the effects of product range and product mix on gross profit. We have got uh, products that are, are called the non-value the, the non items. These products are products which bring in customers. You know, like in a shop, customers can get in, in there, they just want to buy maybe bread, uh, they want to buy bread, they want to buy maybe with your margarine, you know. But so these products, they, they bring people. And then these people, the customers that you have got, in, that, that you have come into, into your shop, they are going to see and buy the high margin products. They are going to see the other products, maybe that they did not intend to buy, but because they are there, they are doing shopping, maybe someone is going to remember that, ah, maybe in the near future, I'm going to need this. Maybe someone is going to remember that, oh, my son is going to have a birthday next week, so I better order the, 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 the birthday cake now than to wait for next week. Something that, that was at the back door of their minds. Maybe they didn't know that you were even selling cakes. So now that they've gotten into, into, into your shop, they've seen that they are, you are selling cakes there, then they can put an order. Then we also, these uh, uh, low margin products must be placed at the back of the shop. Put them right at the back so that when the customers uh, are going from the entrance of the shop, going to the back, they are going to see the other products there. All right, uh, so the customers, as the customers are going to get into the, into the shop, and they are walking right to the back of the shop where they know that uh, maybe bread is, is stocked or the meat, the butchered section is. Then they are, as they are going they, on, the, on the shelves, they are going to see the different products. They are going to see them on, the, on their way in, even on their way out. They may not use the same aisle that they, 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 they came in through. They are going to go out through another, another aisle. So it is very, very important that we, we set up the layout of our shop 
in such a way that it attracts customers who are, um, uh, are going to buy some other products that we, um, um, we have put on the aisles. So they may end up buying more of those high profit margin items. Uh, getting customers to buy more on impulse, how do we uh, make this product? It's not just a matter of them seeing the products uh, uh, displayed on the, on the shelves. They, we have to do some other things that can also attract. So we can use attractive displays. I think we have seen at times we have got gondola ends uh, and so on. And, and, and those uh, uh, mountain uh, displays, those ones, they, they attract customers when they see that there is, they, 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 there is a display. They, they get close and they want to see, and then they may end up buying. And then we display um, to create a need within the customer for the product you want them to buy. Uh, promotion and location of the product. Usually, uh, retailers, they run uh, promotions, so you may need also to run different, uh, different promotions. So you can run a promotion where you can have even promoters there. You can run a promotion that speaks for itself where it just indicates that the items are on sale. I think we have seen that. Usually these days, if you get into a supermarket, you find out that on each and every gondola end, there is a, 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 a signage which, which indicates that there is a sale for the products that are displayed there. So some people, before they can shop, uh, 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 through the, the, the shelves, through the aisles there, they start by checking what is on the gondola ends, and then they get uh, to buy whatever that they need to buy. And then, similar to what I've said before, you can group items. You can group uh, items in terms of their use. Products that are used together, you group them together so that the customer will not just buy one item, but they will buy the different uh, items that are there because they can use them together. Focus lighting on high margin uh, merchandising. This can be done, you see, if you go like clothing uh, retailers, they can have their products that are on sale there, but they can also, if you, you check when their window displays there, they, 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 they put usually the, the products that are new so that the customers can see them and they can, they can buy them. So you can focus more lighting in the shop and then you can also create attractive and appealing displays that attract the customers to the product. Highlighting uh, new products, you can indicate that you can put a signage to indicate that it's a new arrival or it is a new product. And then use uh, ticketing to promote uh, the product, like to say on sale or reduced. Such, such tickets, they attract the customers, they go and uh, try to get more information and then they end up buying the product. Now let's look at the effect of stock price changes on the finances of the business. Uh, at times, uh, uh, prices can be reduced or they can be increased for various reasons. So raising the price of, um, of any product when the cost price remains the same increases the gross, profits of, uh, gross, gross profit of that particular product and ultimately of the business. Expenses, if they remain unchanged, it is going to translate into a, an increase in the net profit as well. So what we mean here is that if for whatever reason you decide to increase the price of your, of your product, then, uh, and then uh, yet that, that product, maybe you are having it in stock uh, for some time, then you see that no, you, uh, there's need for you to mark up. Maybe you've looked at your competitors, the prices of your competitors, then you see that your prices were still low, then you may need to increase um, the prices so that you can also uh, match your, your competitors. It's, it's the same thing when it comes to, to, to reducing. There are different reasons that we can also use to reducing. But when, when you increase the price of, of your products and the cost of, of those products, they remain the same, and also your expenses uh, remain the same, then it means your net profit is going to increase. Then if you reduce the price of those uh, 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 products now, you reduce the, the price of those products, maybe because competition, your, your competitors have reduced their own prices, then this is going to negatively affect your net profit. Your expenses don't go down because you have reduced the price. 
the expenses they remain uh, as they are. So uh, unless if the service providers for those expenses have reduced. So you see, if you just uh, reduce, you don't know the formula that your, your, your competitors are using, the reasons why they've reduced and how they are going to make sure that they maintain their profitability. So you have to be careful when you are doing this. If the business is more of the product concerned, then the impact of either price reduction or price increase is huge. If you are having more of the product and then you increase the, the price, it means you are going to make more money. But if you are having more of that product and then you reduce the price, it means the cut on your net profit, on your gross profit and net profit is going to be high as well. Reducing the price of a product is called a markdown, whilst increasing the, pri the price of a product is called a markup. Markdowns and markups are common in fast-moving consumer goods. Effects of stock price uh, changes uh, continued here. Uh, we have got planned and unplanned markdowns. Sectors uh, such as clothing and textiles have a system of planned markdowns in order to maintain a certain level of uh, profitability. Like, if they buy stock for winter, they may not be able to sell all the stock by the end of winter. So to clear that stock, so, to, so as to create space for uh, stock for, 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 for the water season, your spring and your summer, they need to reduce the prices of those uh, products. So they reduce the prices and then they clear space. So how do they then maintain profitability in such a situation? The, the, what they do is that at the beginning of the season, the initial price of the, those products is usually very high. They, 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 they make a killing, they make huge profits at the beginning of the season. Say at the beginning of winter, everybody is looking at their wardrobe, then they, some they, they say that we don't have a, a warm clothes, some they say we have, but what we're having is, is old. Some they just don't want to wear what they were wearing the previous season. So they are going to buy uh, new, they are going to buy new clothes. And then, so it means that time, the, the business is going to make a, 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 a profits that are, are higher than normal, that are above what uh, they, they normally get under normal circumstances. And then, these profits, uh, the high profits that they have made during the, uh, at the beginning of the season and maybe uh, through to the middle of the, the season, they are going to, uh, uh, to cover. Is, this is what they are going to use to cover for the reduction of price at the end of the season. Yes, we may think that uh, they, are doing, they, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are so nice to us, but they have already made their money. They have already calculated and seen that uh, this is uh, what we expected to get uh, in this season. They've covered their, um, their, their, their costs that they are, their, 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 they are incurring. And then, so now it doesn't, it doesn't affect their profitability when they decide to do a, a price reduction. Then we also have got unplanned uh, markdowns, which are usually a loss to the, uh, to the business. So uh, unplanned markdowns, it could be maybe because a product has been maybe soiled and then you decide to, um, to reduce uh, the, 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 the price. So for whatever reason that the price is reduced, if it's not planned for, then it becomes a loss to the business. So the pricing of the products depends on the overall business environment. There are a number of factors that must be considered before you can say you are reducing your products. And some of this, the, this, the, the factors that, that affect the business in terms of uh, whether they are going to, um, in terms of how they are going to price their products are usually uncontrollable. These are pro uh, uh, factors that are beyond the control of the, um, of the business. Analyze and reduce uh, expenses in a wholesale and retail outlet. You need to identify the expenses that require improvement. Businesses, they incur in a number of expenses. These expenses, they, 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 they include, as I have indicated before, they can include the rent that you are paying for, for using the shop, the, the salaries and wages, uh, the electricity, water, insurance, 
uh, and so on and so forth. So all those expenses, uh, we should try to manage them in such a way that they don't affect the profitability of the business. So in, in other words, what I'm saying is that we should try as much as possible to keep these expenses at the minimum. We should try to reduce where the expenses were high. We try to bring them down and maintain them there. So you need to identify which expenses uh, that require improvement from the reports that we are having from our budget and, and then from our monitoring of the budget. We can see that there are certain expenses that are high. Then develop an action, an action plan to reduce expenses and improve performance. So here's what we want to do. We want to reduce, maybe we have seen that our cleaning expenses, they are, they are, they are becoming too high. So we want to try and, 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 and reduce. So we need to do an, an analysis. Why are they high and why, um, what can be done to reduce those expenses? And the uh, expenses that you incur in a shop, they are, um, they, they are both are fixed expenses and they are also variable expenses. Fixed expenses, we say those are expenses that do not change, that do not respond to the level of business. Whether you have sold uh, uh, much or you have sold less, they remain the same. For example, rent. Rent, whether your business is going to make 10 million in a day or is going to make 100 rand in a day, your rent, if you are paying 5,000 rands a month, you are still going to pay the 5,000 rands in that particular month. So when we are looking at uh, uh, those variable, and then, then the variable costs, the variable costs are those costs that change. For example, if your, your shop is usually open from nine o'clock in the morning to six uh, in the evening, then you realize that now it's, it is busy, it is a busy time, you extend uh, the opening time of your business by two hours. Then you say, instead of closing at six o'clock, we are going to close at eight, eight o'clock. Remember, when your shop is open, you are going to, your, your, your lights are going to be on, so it means more electricity is being consumed. And also, you may need also to pay your employees over time. So it means your, 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 your wage bill is also going to, is also going to go up. So you see, they are responding to the level of business that you are doing. If you are going to do less, you are going to pay less for variable expenses. And these ones, the managers do have influence on. They can influence, they can be able to, to, to either uh, allow them to go up or they can bring them down. Uh, any change, any change on the uh, expenses has got a, a very significant uh, uh, impact on the, on the bottom line, which is your, your net profit. So they have to be managed. How do you do this? You have to have a structure of action. You have to identify the area to reduce. Where do, where do you want to reduce the expense? Like I said, uh, it is an example that you may want to reduce on your or, or, or cleaning. Uh, and then how much? in terms of a percentage. Say we say we want to reduce it by 2%. And then you need to identify what are the steps that you're going to, um, to, to, to take. Then you must also have a target as to when, when do you think you are going to, uh, to have this achieved? When will the, the costs be lower? Um, and then we, we have uh, expenses like your, your salaries. These ones, you see at times uh, salaries, they can, uh, usually they, there is a, a period in which salaries do increase. Uh, usually they increase once a, a year. So that's, that's, a, that's a product, uh, an outcome of the collective bargaining. So management, choose, they may choose not to replace an employee. Say you want to reduce your salaries. You may choose not to replace an employee, maybe who has retired or who has resigned or who has died. Then you say, let's work with the number of people that are there. You redistribute the workload of that uh, individual who's no longer there to the, to the uh, employees who have remained. And then over time, you sh there should not be any unauthorized over time. Then you can also uh, 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 schedule your, the times of your employees 
what, what time do they come to work? Like to say, your employees, if your, your, your shop is opening from, from 9 o'clock to 6 p.m., uh, and then you may see that the hours there, they are too long, they are not permissible by law. So you can say, some can start at 9 and then finish at 4 o'clock, and then the others, they start at uh, 11, and then they finish at, uh, they, they finish at 6. So they come at varying times so that you don't end up paying over time. Casual wage, wages, casual wages, these are usually wages that you pay for people that you hire, especially when you are busy. You may need uh, some extra uh, hands. Advertising, uh, it depends. If you are an independent uh, shop, as a shop manager, you can control, you can control the um, uh, advertising. But, but if you are working in a, in, a, in a chain store, this is usually controlled at the head office. Then bank charges. Bank charges are also uncontrollable depending on the nature of your account. They're usually determined by the bank. So you can choose, you can reduce this cost by choosing a bank that does not uh, charge much. Banks whose uh, uh, bank charges are less. Then we also have uh, cleaning material. I said this one, you, you can control it. Independent stores, store managers must control uh, theft and wastage by staff. Uh, recently I saw a, a, a video which was circulating on social media where when people were entering into, it was, though it was not in a shop, but it's a good example because people were entering, there were nurses entering into their workplace, then they were being sanitized, and then they were being sanitized their hands, they were like dancing, and then being sanitized their shoes, their back, everywhere. And we had the sanitizer is, is meant just for their uh, hands. Then we have uh, computer license fees, these are usually, uh, these are usually fixed. Electricity, it is difficult to control when activities such as in-store baking is done. When not, just ensure that equipment like fridges are working uh, properly. So even then, ovens must only be switched off when they are in use, they should not be left uh, running. And then we have uh, insurance, uh, accurate counting and properly managing stock levels. This is highly un un uncontrollable though, especially for just for the building. But you know, the figures, the amount of stock that you say you are holding at a particular time will affect your premium and even should there be an eventuality, then you can be able to, uh, to claim uh, accurately. Motor vehicle expenses, you can install trackers, tracking systems on your, on, on your cars so that the drivers of those cars, they don't abuse uh, the cars. And then also your drivers must be trained to drive well, to avoid uh, high revs uh, and so on. And then also your cars must be serviced according to the uh, manufacturer's uh, recommendations. Packaging and wrapping, teach staff to use correct size of packaging, ensure packaging materials are not taken home. Staff should not put their own stuff in the uh, packaging uh, material. Printing and stationery, control personal, um, uh, personal usage and theft by staff, ensure proper and efficient use of shelf edge labels. And then rates, these are not variable, but they are charged. But you, you can control things like water, use, water usage, uh, make sure that taps are tightly closed and practice green retailing. Then finally, rent, negotiate. They are negotiated uh, annually, and then at times in your list, they tell you, they, they tell you how much they are going to increase on a yearly basis. So that one, it becomes, the part is, it becomes uncontrollable. So that's it for today. We looked at uh, how you can increase your gross profit, how you can ensure that the cost that you incur in your business uh, uh, are kept low so that your business um, uh, uh, realizes a good profit. Thank you.